noise for your amazing host. Hey everyone, welcome to Sandals Church Kids. Here at Sandals Church, we are all about the vision of being real with ourselves, God, and others. My name is Joelle. And I'm Chanel. And we're so excited to announce our brand new series called The Outline. The Outline is an incredible six week series about the very beginning of the relationship between God and humans. So we're gonna be checking out the very first book of the Bible. Genesis. That's right. And we'll be talking about God's creation, humankind, the fall, the flood, and our purpose in life. So let's take a look at what's next. Coming up. Would you believe me if I told you that this was actually a picture of a penny? That's a pretty weird looking penny, but I'm super excited to see what Mrs. Coyote is talking about. Me too, but first it's time to move on to one of my favorite segments called Mail Time. <laughs> Welcome back to Mail Time, everyone. I'm so excited to dive into the letters that you've sent us today. But first, I wanna tell you guys about a challenge that I've been doing with my kids. It's something that I've done my whole life and I really like it, and it's a drawing challenge. The challenge is this. It is to grab a piece of paper and to take turns drawing on that piece of paper. Now, what will happen is you guys will create something that you never would have created by drawing something just by yourself. It's really fun. So you could draw a circle or part of a face or a smile or a surfboard, but then you hand it to your friend and then they continue the drawing and they can draw a shark or they can draw a frowny face or an eyeball and then they pass it back to you and you continue the drawing and by the end you guys have your very own masterpiece that you could have never done by yourself. I've been trying it with my kids. They've been having a lot of fun. I've been doing it since I was a little kid and I think you guys will love it. But right now, let's jump into our mail. So today we have two letters that we'll be reading and the first one is from Riverside. Ooh, it is filled with some fun stickers. We got an octopus, a turtle, a mermaid. This sticker says mermaid at heart. Very cool. It's from Kaylee and check it out right here. It says believe in him, but instead of an L, she did a cross. Very cool very creative. Kaylee says, I'm Kaylee and I love watching Sandals Church Kids. I love the would you rather question and the services. Would you please draw a girl doing a gymnastics move and can you send the letter back? Yes, of course, Kaylee, I would love to. And at the bottom here, there is a picture that Kaylee drew. It says uneven bars. That is something that they use in gymnastics. And it says me, which that doesn't mean me. I think that this is meaning Kaylee because my hair is definitely not that long. Now, Kaylee, my question to you before I draw a gymnastics move is, do you do gymnastics? You drew a picture and it says me, and it says on the even bars. Do you do the uneven bars? I would love to know, but right now, I'm gonna attempt doing a gymnastics trick. Okay, I know nothing about gymnastics except the word is really cool. I wonder if somebody's name is Jim and their last name is Nastics. You know that has to be true, right? What if there's someone whose name is Jim and their last name is Nasium? Gymnasium. Wow. My mind just exploded. Very cool. Thank you so much, Kaylee, for that challenge, and I will be sending that your way. Moving on to our second letter. This is from Riverside, and it's from Abby, who is six years old. And Abby says, Dear Sandals Church Kids, it is so fun seeing your mail. We love doing mail time. Mr. Coyote, can you send me a would you rather question? Let's do it right now. Would you rather have a horn on your head every time you eat or Every time you eat, you'd have to pretend like you're on a roller coaster. So every time you eat food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you would have a horn on your head. <laughs> or every time you eat, you'd have to be on a roller coaster, which would be really fun and hard to eat. <laughs> Maybe at the end when, when you eat, they would take a picture of you, and then you have to pay like $45 to get the picture of yourself. Sheesh. 
so expensive. So thank you guys so much for sending this mail. And because we have your address, now we have an opportunity to send you mail. And for those of you who would love to send us mail, there are two very easy ways that you can do that. The first is by sending us mail at 150 Palmerita Avenue, Riverside, California, 92507. And the second is sending us an email at mail at sandalskids.com. Whichever one you choose, I cannot wait to read your letter. But right now, let's jump into pre-show. Hey guys, and welcome to our set for our brand new series called The Outline. Now we wanted to give you guys some super fun and top secret behind the scenes info about how we decided on the final concepts for our set design. So here's the deal. The Outline series is about the beginning of humanity's relationship with God, and more importantly, how the big story of the Bible ties all of our stories together. Now we're gonna be talking about how there are patterns of Jesus throughout these stories all the way through your life today. Now you can see behind me, there's several wooden frames with different types of colored yarn. Each frame represents a different story. So maybe the one over here represents the story of Noah as he trusts God as God asks him to build an ark. Another one over here could be the story of the first humans, Adam and Eve. And I'll leave this one up to you, but maybe you choose one of these frames to represent your story. You'll notice though that through each frame, there is a common thread running through each of these stories. That white thread that you see represents Jesus and how he is absolutely a part of every single one of our stories, starting thousands of years ago until right now. So now when we created these pieces, we used simple wooden frames, we used lots of different colored yarn, and we used a ton of hot glue. And yes, this bandit on my finger represents the huge burn that I got. I also have one right here. And you'll see too, we created an outline logo out of wire and that white thread. And of course, I cannot forget to mention that Robot Jeff is holding a ball of yarn too. He did help out. We hope that you guys enjoy the outline series and we also hope that you love getting to hear about how we came up with the concept for all the details in each of our video sets. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you guys next time. All right, friends, we're gonna jump into a time of worship together. This is a great opportunity for you to really think about God and who he is and also thank him for all he's done for you. Now's a chance for you to get real with yourself and with God. Maybe you had a tough week or a difficult morning or maybe you had an awesome week. Take some time right now to think about where you are. You might need to take a moment to pray or you might be ready to jump right in. While you worship, feel free to close your eyes, raise your hands, you might even clap and dance around. How you want to worship God is up to you as you think about your relationship with Him. So now, let's get ready to worship together. Scaling in, you're holding it. 
So today we're talking about one story to rule them all, which is about all the stories in the entire Bible. All right, Chanel, what would you say is one of your favorite books? Hmm, I would say as a kid, my favorite book was Harold and the Purple Crayon. It's a nice. story about a kid who's got a magic purple crayon and he draws things and they come to life. And I always wanted that as a kid. 
Well, being your favorite, I'm guessing you've read it more than once, right? Oh, definitely. Even though I already know what happens at the end of the book, I love to read it over and over again. I always notice new little things that hint at what's coming up next. And of course, it's easy to understand the more I read, plus I already know what's gonna happen at the end. Well, did you know the Bible has these same kind of hints about your life? The Bible gives us the outline that shows us how our life will go. So today in the outline, we're talking about the huge story of the Bible and our part in that story. We're going to see how God showed us his plan to love and save all of humanity at the very start. This series will show us why we were created in the first place, what we are meant to do with our lives, why life can be so hard sometimes, and how we can't do it without God. This week, we'll see how our story is tied to the entire story of the Bible by knowing that the whole Bible points to Jesus. That means we can find the patterns, promises, and presence of Jesus in the Bible. So lean in, because our story starts now. Imagine if you were watching a brand new movie with your family. You grab your big bucket of popcorn, you got your snacks, you got some drinks, and of course, a cuddly blanket that you can all share. You turn the movie on, but immediately you're confused. Wait, what's happening? Who are all those people and what are, what are they doing? And what's that thing over there? Then about 10 minutes in, the credits start rolling. Well, hold on, that's it? It's already over? That was so confusing. But that's when you realize that somehow you were accidentally watching the very end of that brand new movie and you missed the entire rest of the story that was at the beginning. Now, if you could go back and start at the beginning, then everything would make sense. And did you know that sometimes we do that very same thing when we read the Bible? We only read pieces of it and think that that's all there is. But the Bible is way bigger than you might think. So let's check it out. Now, did you know that the whole entire Bible is actually one big story? Whoa, 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 time out. Before we start talking about what the Bible is all about, let's talk about what the Bible is. The Bible is the word of God or God's words to us. Did you know that God wrote the Bible so you can know where you come from, why things are the way they are, and what you could do about it? The Bible tells us the most important things we need to know about ourselves, God, and others. Over 35 different people were inspired by God himself to write its different parts. The Bible is one big book in two parts, the Old Testament, which shows us why we need Jesus, and the New Testament, which shows Jesus' life and his sacrifice for us. Those two parts are made of 66 different books with hundreds of different people and places and stories. Some books are history, some books are letters, some are poetry, some are laws, and some are prophecies, just to name a few. And the Bible is written over a period of a thousand years. The Bible is 100% true and is the most important book ever written. Definitely one you wanna read over and over and over again. Okay, time in. So, the most interesting and important thing about the Bible is that the whole entire Bible is actually one big story. A story 100% completely about Jesus. Every smaller story in the Bible is actually part of the big story of Jesus' sacrifice. We can find Jesus in every single part of the Bible in one of three ways, and sometimes all three. So in some parts of the Bible, we see patterns of Jesus or things that are similar to him in some way. For example, in the very first book of the Bible called Genesis, we meet a man named Adam. Maybe you've heard of him. Now, the pattern of Adam's life reminds us of the pattern of Jesus' life. Adam was one man that brought sin and death to the whole world by eating fruit from a tree, while Jesus was one man that saved the whole world and gave them new life by dying on a tree, the wooden cross. Adam's pattern shows what life is like when 
you don't obey God. While Jesus changes the pattern to show what life looks like when you do obey God. But that's not it. In other parts of the Bible, we see the promise of Jesus coming to save humanity. For example, in the book of Isaiah, written hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus lived on earth, the Bible talks about someone perfect who would willingly suffer and die to take our sins away and forgive us. Does that sound familiar? Well, that's a promise of Jesus coming to save us even though he hadn't come to earth yet. In some parts of the Bible, we see Jesus' presence or how he was with people. For example, the book of John tells us that Jesus was there when the world was created. In fact, he was the one who created everything and gave us life because he is God. He has always existed. And not only that, Jesus is the reason everything was made. Then Jesus became part of what he made so he could be with us and rescue us. Now we get to be in his presence or close to him forever. So these are just a few examples of how Jesus is in every story of the Bible and how every story is actually about him. And it's super important to understand and read the Bible like it's one big story because it is. That's why the one thing to remember is that the whole Bible points to Jesus. The Bible is kind of like these everyday items. In front of me, I have a toothbrush, I have some grass, and I have some salt and pepper. Now, the whole Bible is one big story full of lots of little things that point right to the specific story of Jesus and how he came to save us. But it's really easy to get too focused on just one part of the Bible and forget to see the rest of the big picture. It's basically like only looking at these items in front of me on the surface and not knowing the details and their intricacies that go into each one. Now, you see grass every single day. You maybe take off your shoes and run barefoot through it. You brush your teeth every single night, hopefully. And you might use salt and pepper to season your food when you sit down for dinner. It's not really that interesting, and you might actually end up ignoring how special each one of these things are. Well, that's because we're forgetting all about the rest of the picture. Let me show you what I mean. So this is a picture of each of these items under a microscope. Now, when you look at each of these, you can see the details, the patterns, the textures, and the colors of each item that you wouldn't be able to see just by looking at it every day on the surface. You actually have to go deeper and see all of the characteristics of how each structure is made, just like how we need to read and know every single piece of the Bible in order to understand the big story. The Bible isn't just a collection of stories about random people that aren't related to each other. The Bible shows us the entire story of humanity through patterns that repeat over and over again. That's why it's so important to look at the Bible as many pieces of one big story that tells us about God and humanity. Now, it's like looking at the whole big picture. The pattern of the Bible goes something like this. God blesses humans and asks us to follow him. We sin big time, and then God saves us even though we don't deserve it. This happens over and over and over again. Humans, since the beginning of time all the way till now, do the exact same thing, and they run away from God, but God keeps loving us and giving us more chances. We can learn a lot about our own life by seeing how the Bible connects to our life's story. That's why it's important to know that we can find the patterns, promises, and presence of Jesus in the Bible. Hey guys, my name's Ashton, and a time that I've seen Jesus in my story is when my grandma had a stroke and she couldn't see out of one of her eyes. But when she got her surgery, she was finally able to see out of that eye, and she could finally see us again. And that's why I know Jesus was able to heal her. Hi, my name is Holland. 
And I saw Jesus in my story when I was riding a bike on a really big hill, and I fell off my bike and tumbled and tumbled. And when my mom came to get me, um, I only had a little bruise on my arm, and Jesus protected me. When I was a younger kid, I had a few struggles, but other than that, God helped me get out of the dark into the light, and now I get to build a stronger relationship with Him. Hi, my name is Kylie, and when I saw Jesus in my story was when I moved to Redlands Court. I felt really nervous about my new school and my new house, but it turned out really nice because I met a lot of new friends, and I still uh, got in touch with my old friends by letters and I had a lot of fun where I am now. So this is how I saw Jesus in my story when he helped me feel comfortable and welcome in my new home. Hi, my name is Brown, and I saw Jesus in my story when we helped the elderly woman because her husband died and we took out her trash cans every week, and Jesus showed me ways that I could help her. One time I was going on the roller coaster and I felt really scared, but then I asked God to help me be brave. And when I went on that roller coaster, probably the fastest one, I felt brave and I know Jesus helped me. Hi, my name is Caden and I saw Jesus in my story last year whenever I started having um, stomach aches and I started throwing up a lot and we didn't know it was wrong but every night whenever I had them, I'd pray, and to this day, I don't have them anymore, and I know for sure that Jesus answered my prayers. My name is Justice, and I saw Jesus in my story when we moved to California, and I had a new church, a new school, and a new neighborhood, and I prayed to God to give me some new friends, and he gave me a lot of new friends, and that's how I saw Jesus in my story. The Bible says in John 1, 3 through 4, all things were made through Jesus. Nothing was made without him. In him there was life. That life was light for the people of the world. Everything in the Bible is part of one big story. It's Jesus' story and our story combined. When we read the Bible without thinking about how it connects to Jesus and us, we are missing out big time. That's why the one thing to remember is that the whole Bible points to Jesus. You have called me on a journey that lasts a whole life long. I can't do Give
let's take a quick look at our verse for this series. It comes from John chapter one, verse three and four. And it says, all things were made through him. Nothing was made without him. In him, there was life. That life was the light of the people of the world. We hope you learned something new this week. And remember, the one thing for today is the whole Bible points to Jesus. And what can you do about that? You can find the patterns, promises, and presence of Jesus in the Bible by reading the Bible, asking questions, and remembering how the big story of the Bible connects to our story. See you next week.